Good evening. If you want to be a politician, then try to find out how is it being Raina Mulodinga. On August, um, on four years ago, on 2018, Raina Dinga held a handshake with the President Uhuru Kenyatta. That handshake would then give back to BBI and they went through the BBI process until it was stopped by the High Court. But as fate would have its way, Raila Dinga announced his presidential bid and President Uhuru Kenyatta would then, would then later come to support him in what was actually packaged as giving hand to a brother that came to help when people who formed government with President Uhuru Kenyatta abandoned the government. Many and a lot has been said about the fallout between Deputy President and, um, and President Uhuru Kenyatta. So what happened is the moment the President showed intention that he was going to support Raila Dinga, Raila Dinga was branded a state project. And this is a remote narrative that was peddled by one Musalia Mudavadi. So when that happened, all through Deputy President William Ruto was conducting rallies in the larger Central Kenya region to cement his support in the region. However, um, as time went by, Raila chose the running mate, Martha Karua, and William Ruto settled on Rigadi Geshagwa. Now, that opened another contest between the two running mates. And in 20, in the August 9th general election, it seems the choice of running mate was emerging as a determinant factor on the resultant number of votes that the presidential candidate would garner at the polls. That is how uh, the ground, that was the baseline of how the 2022 election was shaped. Today, the Kenya concert team were having an uh, economic block meeting in Moranga, and after Moranga, they went to Nyeri. So the contest between um, Gashagwa and, uh, and Karua is one that is already sending the whole team in panic. And of course it was expected, the Kenyans were waiting to see how the presidential strategists around Ruto Gashagwa ticket were going to face off with the reality of the wave that Mata Karua is already now trying to spread in the Mount Kenya region. So ladies and gentlemen, I watched the event all the way from the, the event in Muranga and the rally that was held in Regadi Geshagwa's constituency, Madeira, in the parts of Karatina. So I was so keen on how they packaged themselves and there are some two um, indications that, uh, two observations that I made. One was a very wild allegation by Moses Kuria that Raila Dinga is being supported, or rather Raila Dinga is getting the support to vie for presidency because someone had told Moses Kuria that Raila was going to die after one year. Then after that, Martha Karua will take over the presidency. That was not attack on Martha Karua, but that was directly Moses Kuria on it again, now talking about the life of Raila Dinga. And someone was making a joke in the Twitter when this video was shared that Moses Kure may be a Gaku for when he was abroad. <laughs> he would have died when he was also abroad. And you know, sometimes that's what politics is. Now, um, on the other side, the Shagwa first rally that Kishagwa and William Ruto held in, uh, in Kajiado, they attacked Martha Karo. And in fact, the Gishagwa himself attacked Martha Karo, saying, Yule Mama. And it was a very wild statement. Now today, while speaking in Muranga, he has actually said that they were attacking Raila, or rather, let's not even attacking, let's say they were abusing Raila, but they were holding their horses because they could see William Ruto behind him.
Now I want you to um, I want us to listen to the voice of Regebi Geshego saying that they are not now going to attack uh, Mata Karua because Mata Karua is the person in front then Raila is behind but they are just going to go behind Mata Karua and look for Raila Odinga and now attack Raila Odinga. I want you to listen to that bit. Zimebadilika. Unajua hapo amekuwa akijificha nyuma ya uhuru. Sasa tukijaribu kulenga yeye tunaona uhuru wetu na mtoto wetu na kiongozi wetu tunarudi nyuma. Sasa uhuru president wetu amefanya kitu ya maana na ya heshima. Ameondoka. Sasa na sisi tumempongeza rais kwa sababu kusema ukweli. Kusema ukweli tulikuwa tuna tunaona haya ya kwamba kama president angekuja kwa hii campaign tungemkosea heshima na hatukutaka nimeona pia huyu kitendawili tena amekimbia saa ile rais ameondoka amejificha nyuma ya dada yetu sasa sisi tutatafuta njia ya ile kulenga vile hatutaumisha dada yetu sisi tutafuta njia Si mnajua vile tutatafuta? Hata kama tu yeye front tunapitia ka? Tunapitia kando. This allegation is further from the truth. When they were attacking the president and that onslaught was started by Moses Kuria, they were blaming the president that the president had abandoned the region. So they were also saying that the president was not concentrated or maybe there are some development projects that stalled in central Kenya but the truth of the matter is uh, if the economy was affected then the whole country was affected but it was customized for political toll and that was expected now after saying that now we say it Raila is the person that brought all that <laughs> now again in Nyeri they repeated, uh, again, the Geshebo repeated the same data. And, and sometimes I think um, politicians, this is something they have realized that Mutu Nikama want to cram something. So Akisha cram when he goes to this rally, that rally just says the same thing. They sit down, they script, this is what you're going to say, and this is how you're going to say it. Then he, again, the Geshebo repeated that their daughter, uh, their daughter Mata Karua and their son Uhuru Kenyatta, they are, not go, they are now not going to attack the two, but they are going to attack Raila Odinga. The question is, uh, are there people who are going to vote, people who might support Raila Odinga because of Mata Karua, are they going to be persuaded by attack on Raila Odinga? Secondly, so is attack on Raila a new thing? Or they have been attacking Raila all through the four years? And let's not even say attacking, maybe abusing Raila all through the four years. What is new? in that strategy so it's keen and what i've realized is that there is an onslaught against raila objectively they are now um trying to divert attention and i think they have been advised not to attack mata Karwa. so that's what i want us to look at on the objective of attacking raila behind mata Karwa instead of facing off with Mata Karua. Uh, uh, one thing you can read, the observation you can make from this latest strategy is that it is intended at making sure that they avoid a face off and instead a face off between Geshago and Mata Karua. Now I want to explain to you why they have to be very cautious with Mata Karua attacks, especially in this video. What they have done is I have seen Ali Swahume and Ketu Aruguru now the next battlefront to attack Mata Karua and <laughs> ironically enough the presidential candidate William Samoy Ruto is part of that team he is now attacking Mata Karua William Ruto Ketu Arguru and Alice Wahome then Rigade Geshagwa and the other MPs the main MPs are attacking Raila Odinga so another question that someone was asking is this where did they drop the bottom-up economic model and the empowerment message as the catch for Mount Kenya instead of going for Raila Odinga? Because um, 
the the messaging around Kenya Kwanza has been that that this politics will be based on issues. Now is attacking Raila Odinga amongst the issues on table. And that is why me I challenge a dominant narrative by analysts who say that there is a reformist ticket and there is an economic ticket. I may not be sure about the reformist ticket, but one thing I'm sure is in Kenya Kwanza the question of economy is not in the table. That one is my position. It is not in the table. What is in the table is making sure that we win the election. And winning the election is one, lock Rift Valley, go to central Kenya, and abuse the Odinga as long as you want. And through that, you lock, bring a tyranny of numbers, let people vote for Raila on hate. <laughs> and the question is this, huh? The turnout uh, has been um, on William Ruto. Initially, it was they vote for Ruto because he's been betrayed by Uhuru. So when they realize that there is a likelihood that Uhuru is not now in campaign trail, it is now going on Raila. Is it going to succeed? Raila has never been part of government. Is it going to succeed? So ladies and gentlemen, let's face it. Why are they so cautious on facing off with Martha Mungari Karua? They want to suppress the Martha Karua gender card. One thing you have to agree is this, eh? um, when the Gadi Gashagwa attacks, attacked Martha Karua during the rally in Kajiado, it was bad that he attacked Martha Karua based on the fact that she is a woman. Now that is a very precarious condition, that is a very precarious situation and what they are now trying to do or what someone wants to achieve by this is to make sure that the contest is to make sure that um, Karua is not the determinant factor on Raila Odinga's vote hunting. Now I can assuredly tell you that with the new um, campaign front that Mata Karua is, the new alternative, in fact if you ask me, is an alternative voice in Mount Kenya, because the grain was the UDA and it had really taken the ground. The emergence of Mata Karua is giving an alternative voice to the central Kenya voters. So one thing they have to do is to make sure or rather try to gratify the minds of voters that Mata Karua is inconsequential in Raila Odinga's ticket. So it's not even now, initially it was Raila Uhuru ticket, now they have to make sure that people who vote for Raila Odinga should look at Raila but they should not consider Mata Wangari Karua. And let me tell you, <laughs> I want to tie this with something I want to add. There is, this is secondly going to help to kill or rather to fade the elusive contest between Mata Karua and Rigadi Geshagwa for one reason. That's a contest that Rigadi Geshagwa cannot win. Secondly, when the focus will be on the two of them, it is going, because Geshagwa has been in this for some time, it is going to give Mata Karua the odds and they will not want that contest. They want that contest number two William Ruto knows that the winner of that contest most likely is going to be the central Kenya kingpin. <laughs> yes. By the way, to say the truth, the next central Kenya kingpin is in between the two running mates. Whoever makes government. If Gashaga wins with Ruto, Gashaga is going to be the kingpin. If Mata Karua wins with Raila, Mata Karua is going to be the kingpin. So, Ruto also doesn't want the votes to come on the basis of the running mate. That is very key. But then, if you listen to the messaging, and I just want to challenge you to um, just get some time and go through YouTube and find some clips of Rigedi Geshagwa and another person is Kimani Chungwa. They are intentionally holding Raila responsible for the Jubilee baggage. Garbage. I'm like, they are the ones who are in government. So there was a narrative that came through BBI that when BBI was going through, BBI was an idea of Raila Odinga, and so because it was Raila Odinga's idea, government attention was diverted, and they never mentioned about COVID. They don't acknowledge that maybe economy was also destroyed 
but the ravaging COVID-19 and all the other international uh, occurrences that affect the Kenyan economy. They don't acknowledge that, but only hold Raila responsible for that. One, campaign period is normally a very delicate time because as of now, the truth is economy is really dilapidated. People are struggling with inflation, with the price of fuel, people are st struggling with the scarcity of resources, and there's just a lot of hopelessness. Because of this hopelessness, Kenyans might be blinded to look at the real issues, but vote on the basis of what is at the face. So the script is to make sure that if there is the price of things are not done, or the roads are not are incomplete, it's about Raila Odinga. Simply because there is no perception that Uhuru Kenyatta is not in the picture. And if you ask me, in fact I will analyze why, what will happen that ultimately Uhuru will campaign for Raila Odinga. Even if not in central Kenya, even if not actively on ground, but Uhuru will campaign for Raila Amolo Odinga. Lastly, this is just a ploy to propagate Rhinophobia. Rhinophobia, I think it is some, um, I don't say it's a magic, but it's a misery, it's a mirage that was created in the mind of the young generation. The people that are old embrace Raila Odinga. But if you look at, if you listen to the way even Moses Kure was talking and the way these leaders talk, they try to portray Raila to the voters there as some as not even a human being, you know, they try to portray him as, I, I can't even explain, it's even difficult to explain, but then the fear of Raila, so that when people used to wake up huh, in 2013 and 2017 to go and vote Raila, send Raila to Bondo. So you really will listen in the rallies and it doesn't shock when in the rallies someone says that to take a Raila Kovilbara is going to intellect a board. <laughs> But Uganda is my place, eh? it's close to my home. So, um, it is just propagating Raila phobia and with the one aim of boosting or creating a euphoria for the voter turnout. When people vote, let's go and vote out Raila Dinga go to Bondo. They did that in 2017, Raila still remained. Now, that is going to be there. As to whether this can bring a big number to go to the polling station, it's a test of time. But from where I'm standing, I don't think it's a desperate move. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my analysis.